Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I hope you have things to be grateful for. I certainly do. And I want to read a special story to you called The Palace of Bird's Beaks. Long ago, when time was measured by the trickle of sand, there lived a godly king named Solomon. And it so happened on the birthday of King Solomon's wife was approaching, and she asked for one gift. She fancied that a palace should be made from bird's beaks. And so you shall have one, he said to his dear wife. And he put out a message to all the feathered creatures in his kingdom that they were to assemble here in a week. And when it arrived, the air was filled with the noise of bird wings, squawks, and hoots and chirps, and they were wondering, they all came to answer Solomon's call. What do you want? <clears throat> In the end, the king noticed that there was one type of bird that was missing, the hoopoe. It's odd. I'm surprised the hoopoe is not here, Solomon thought. He always had a great affection for the hoopoe, and he wondered, thought that the bird shared that affection with him too. Hmm. But he saw no reason to keep the other birds waiting, so he said, we'll have to proceed without the hoopoe. I've asked you here today because the queen has desired to have a palace built of bird's beaks. The birds were stunned. It fell silent. They were small and insignificant, but they hadn't expected this. Give up their beaks? What a dreadful thought. How would they survive without it? On the other hand, Solomon was wise and good. And if he asked for their beaks, who were they to say no? You can place your beaks in a pile over there, Solomon said. Birds began forming several lines to do as the king asked. And at the very moment, the hoopoe arrived. The colorful bird dropped down in front of Solomon, who glared at the creature with impatience. And where have you been? Flying hither and yon, my king. Hmm. Well, I just finished all asking all the others, and now I'm going to ask you. Your beak is needed to make a palace of bird's beaks for my queen. Mm, Majesty, I can't give up my beak so easily, so easily, so readily. Oh, you can't? What makes you think you're different than the other birds? I am no different, but in my travels, I've learned many things. I ask you to listen to what I have to say. Very well, said Solomon. I have a proposition. Here are three riddles. Answer all three correctly, and I'll gladly give my beak up. No complaint. Fail to answer even one of the riddles and you must allow us to keep our beaks. Everybody was stunned by the hoopoe's boldness. How dare a mere bird challenge the mighty Solomon? But the king admired the bird's courage. He felt that he could certainly answer the three riddles. He was the wisest man in the world. He agreed to the bar. He agreed to the bar. Very well. Here's the first riddle. Who is it who's never born and shall never die? That's an easy one, left King Solomon. The creator, of course, who's made all there is, gesturing with his outstretched arms. He's made the fields, he's made the animals, he's made everything. And then silently, he thought, he also made the birds. Here's the second riddle, then, the hoopoe said nervously. Can you tell me what water neither rises from the ground nor falls from heaven? Solomon wasted no time in answering this one either. That would be a tear, a tear of sadness. The king looked at the birds assembled before him. There was no mistaking the look of despair in their eyes. Sad thoughts began to fill Solomon's heart, and he even felt a tear on his own cheek. All right, here's the last riddle, said the hoopo, his voice quavering. This was also the last chance to save the bird's beaks. What's delicate enough to put food in a baby's mouth? and yet strong enough to bore holes in wood. King Solomon's face creased in thought. He pulled on his beard. He looked skyward. <sighs> Why, it must be a beak, a bird's beak. But the king's satisfaction quickly dissolved into shame. He looked at the multitude of wondrous birds before him, birds of every size, every shape imaginable whose beaks were so essential to their survival, and he felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. 
Then he reached out and gently took the hoopoe up in his hands, raising the bird high above his head. Speaking loudly enough for all to hear, Solomon said, I have solved hoopoe's three riddles, but he poses another question for which I have no answer. And that is this, why should you give up your bird's beaks? Your beaks are not mine to take. Hear this, there shall be no palace made of bird's beaks. The great relief he saw in the bird's eyes was almost enough to make him cry. To the brave Hoopo, he said, it takes a wise man to know when he's been a fool and what a fool I have been. My small friend, you have shown, shown far greater wisdom than I. You are the king of the birds. Asking the Hoopo to stay behind, Solomon addressed the others, you may go now, blessings upon you. The grateful king then summoned the goldsmith and had him fish, fashion a tiny crown for the hoopo, he carefully placed it on the bird's head. Hoopo wears this crown to this day, for it serves as a reminder that true wisdom can be found in the smallest of things. So friends, I hope that in your own way, you find how to add years to your life by pursuing your passion, which will energize you and not wear you out. May you all learn how to appreciate instead of criticize, have positive expectation instead of negative anticipation, and be a life giver rather than someone who's a life draining person. And remember, whatever you claim, you're going to bring into your life. So ask it, because spirit will give you every need that you demand.